And joining me now via Zoom, the director of Sisu, Mr. Yalmari Hellander. Welcome, Yalmari. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. I know that you're doing a bunch of these today, and you're coming all the way from Finland. I got a lot of questions, but a little time. I saw the movie last night, really enjoyed it. One one thing I think uh, we should explain is kind of what the name means, uh, what Sisu means, and uh, kind of the inspiration behind the film. I would love to know about that. The reason I made the film, because I wanted to explain what Sisu means. So you have to see the film to understand what Sisu means to me. And uh, it's a really finished thing. And uh, and I think uh, I'm, I'm trying to find like a finished things. If, if I'm making a movie from Finland, I, I want to uh, do something really finished like in rare exports, it was Santa Claus, but in this this uh, particular film, it's Sisu, which basically is like an uh, willpower not to give up. The expression, it's an interesting expression. I was interested also um, in your influences. I, I saw in the film uh, some, I, I saw like shades of like a Sergio Leone, uh, a little Sam Peckinpah, some Kubrick. Can you talk about the, the kind of the inspiration uh, and, and what led you to make the film this way? Probably the biggest influence is behind me the first blood, uh, which like really, really make a made a huge impact on me when I was a kid, and uh, and you can see it from this film very clearly, I think. But the visual style comes from old Western movies, which which I looked with my dad when I was a kid quite a lot. So I think those are the most, the biggest two influences. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with your lead actor, with uh, Yorma Tomilla, and kind of how you work with him and the choice that he would sort of be silent through the whole movie? We have a long relationship with Yorma. He's worked in basically everything I've done. Uh, and um, I knew it from the start that he's going to be Atami. Uh, uh, there, there wasn't any choice in my mind, and and I needed to have that kind of like a long relationship and and the respect and and the trust we have for each other to to be able to do this because he understand exactly what I was going for and and I know I know what he's capable of, and uh, so we made a good team while we were doing this film. And, uh, well, he's awesome in it. Now, there's a lot of action in this movie, uh, lots of action. Can you talk a little bit about, like, your philosophy of action and, and like, what makes a good action scene to you? Well, I, I think it's it's good to be able to surprise the audience of what, what you are going to show them next. And, and you always have to top yourself going forward with the film uh, that's something what was like, like in the 90s movies, it, it, it was quite often we, you had like a really nice final showdown, like like the biggest action scene is, is the final action scene of the film. I don't know where that has like lost in, in nowadays because it feels like you don't have that anymore. You have the biggest action scene in the middle or something. Uh, I think you have to like make it bigger every step and in the end you need something special uh that's my philosophy of, of doing action was there any kind of pressure on you because everything seems to be like a pg-13 movie right now like with the superhero films everything's pg-13 if you want to have a big hit it should be pg-13 um wh what kind of gave you the license to make this a hard r with blood and violence and you know, foul language and things like that. That was one thing what was also clear from the beginning that this will be a really violent film. I didn't want want to have any rules or anyone to telling me that I can't do this or that. Uh, and uh, and because this film doesn't have like a huge budget, uh, we were able to sell it with Petri so that 
we have the creative control of of everything there was no one telling me like okay maybe you're going too far now or anything like that so i felt like a really nice like a freedom of doing what the fuck i wanted and and it feels good can you talk about a little bit about impact and kind of what imp- like i saw this in the theater and i definitely think it's a big screen movie I, you know like i i think you're going to get the maximum effect out of this movie watching it on a big screen how do you want audiences to walk away out of this picture well i, I want them to be like surprised and and uh smile on their faces that they have seen something that they like couldn't imagine they will see going to see this movie or any movie basically because uh what people are saying to me now is that they are so glad of how entertaining it is and and how it keeps surprising you no one can guess what autumn is going to do next and uh I, I think it will leave a uh, wide smile on everyone's face when they leave out from the theater. Is there anything else that you um, you know want to impart to audiences uh, before uh, before they see the picture? I don't want to spoil anything. I just want to encourage people to to go actually to the movie theater to see this because this film is it doesn't have like that much dialogue. The all the strength. And that uh, is in the pictures and in the sound. We we used a lot of time to to try to do that as well as it can be done. To have all that details in the sound and to make it feel alive. And and I I, I I've seen it in many places. And and the bigger theater you go, the best effect you will have. 